parents abandon their son for considering him an abomination and a doctor adopts him. But what happens next? Imagine this. Parents abandon a newborn because they are unprepared for what they see as an aberration. But this baby isn't a conjoined twin or any other common anomaly. He was born with a second head on his back. On a quiet morning at a small town hospital, a woman's anguished screams pierce the stillness, shattering the calm. Nurses rush to prepare the delivery room for what they assumed would be a routine birth. However, as the baby's head began to emerge, an unsettling tension thickened the air. Oh my God, a nurse whispered, her eyes wide with shock. The exhausted mother, her complexion pale and drawn, sensed something was dreadfully amiss. What's happening? What's wrong with my baby? Her voice trembled, laced with fear. What should have been a moment of unbridled joy devolved into astonishment and horror. The newborn had a lifeless head protruding from its back, a grim testament to nature's unpredictability. Dr. Marcos, the calm and composed obstetrician, took a deep breath, feeling the weight of the situation bear down upon him. Calm down, everyone. We will care for both mother and baby, he asserted, turning to the distraught mother, whose sobs filled the room with despair. We will do our best, he promised, though uncertainty clouded his own heart. As they examined the baby, whispers of disbelief and fear began to spread through the corridors. Did you see that? How is this possible? The air was thick with a mix of horror and morbid curiosity. Dr. Marcos understood the urgency of the situation. Prepare a room for immediate examinations, he ordered, his voice steady. The baby's soft cries echoed through the room, reminding everyone that he was not just a medical curiosity. He was a human being facing an uncertain future. The mother's wails mingled with the baby's cries as the father stood in shock, his face a mask of disbelief. I... I can't, he murmured, stepping back, unable to confront the reality of his child. What did we do? Why is this happening? The mother's voice trembled with despair, the harsh truth of their unexpected tragedy weighing heavily upon her. The father, consumed by anger and panic, hoped for reassurance from the doctor, but there were no magic words to alleviate his torment. We'll try to understand what has happened, Dr. Marcos said softly but the father's grief had rendered him deaf to any rational explanation. No, he shouted, his voice echoing through the sterile room. Overwhelmed, he fled the delivery room, leaving the mother alone, drowning in tears and fear of the world's judgment. Hours passed and the oppressive weight of dread hung heavily in the air. The father sat in silence, grappling with the unbearable decision before him. After what felt like an eternity, they resolved to leave the hospital unable to face the reality of what had transpired. Abandoning the baby felt like their only way out, a mix of guilt and relief consuming their hearts. Meanwhile, in the hospital nursery, fate was poised to take an unexpected turn. Dr. Marcos returned to find the baby alone, the silence of the nursery laden with unspoken questions. He paused, looking beyond the faceless second head, and saw a vulnerable child in desperate need of someone to believe in him. Memories of his own childhood flooded back. The feeling of rejection for being different, for standing apart. That baby needed more than medical care. He needed compassion, hope, and a chance to thrive. Dr. Marcos approached the incubator, determined to be a light in the darkness for the abandoned child. In a world filled with invasive questions and the challenges of raising a child with special needs, Dr. Marcos stood resolute. He didn't see just an anomaly, he saw a life a child who deserved love, a chance to grow, and a family to call his own. Thus, a baby born under improbable circumstances found an equally improbable home. Dr. Marcos, the solitary doctor who chose to care, became the father of Daniel, the little warrior. Together, they would face the world as a new family, ready to confront each challenge, knowing that love and acceptance would be their greatest allies. Dr. Marcos had never been the type to give up easily, from the moment he decided to adopt Daniel, he understood that the journey ahead would be fraught with obstacles. As months passed, his commitment deepened. Daniel was a charming boy, his bright eyes soaking up every detail of the world around him, perpetually curious despite the limitations imposed by his condition. Yet Dr. Marcos knew that for Daniel to lead a more typical life, something had to change. The harsh reality became increasingly apparent. The second head, 
an unwanted appendage was devoid of function, lacking brain activity or response to stimuli. It was a burden, both literally and figuratively, and Dr. Marcos could not accept that his son would face life carrying such a weight. Thus began an unwavering quest for solutions. He spent countless sleepless nights delving into medical journals, scrutinizing rare cases, and seeking answers wherever they could be found. In one of those articles, he stumbled upon a report of a similar surgery performed abroad, reigniting a flicker of hope within him. He knew he had to act. Over the following months, Dr. Marcos dedicated himself entirely to Daniel's cause. He consulted renowned specialists, held discussions with neurosurgeons, orthopedic surgeons, geneticists, and psychologists. He attended medical conferences, presented Daniel's case at seminars, and traveled to countries where pioneering surgeons were willing to undertake this unprecedented challenge. Some deemed him reckless, others viewed him as courageous. But for Dr. Marcos, it was all or nothing for Daniel. When Daniel turned six months old, Dr. Marcos felt the time had come. He managed to assemble an extraordinary medical team comprising the best professionals he had met during his tireless search. The plan was to remove the majority of the second head, a risky and intricate procedure. A date was set and tension mounted. There were no guarantees. The risks were monumental. On the day of the surgery, the hospital was enveloped in an atmosphere of uncertainty. The medical team was laser focused, reviewing every detail of the procedure as if their very lives depended on it. And in many ways they did. The operating room was illuminated by bright lights, casting a spotlight on little Daniel, who seemed even smaller on the surgical table. The monitors beeped rhythmically, mirroring the slow, steady cadence of his tiny heart. Clad in surgical garb, Dr. Marco stood beside the lead neurosurgeon, his gaze fixed on Daniel as the anesthesiologist began administering sedation. Let's begin, announced the lead neurosurgeon, breaking the heavy silence. The next hours would stretch longer than any of them could imagine. Every movement, every incision was executed with meticulous precision. The tension was almost unbearable. There were moments when the monitors emitted alarming alerts, causing Dr. Marcos to feel his heart stop along with Daniel's. Yet he remained resolute, a rock in the storm. The procedure dragged on, feeling like an eternity. The medical team functioned in perfect harmony, yet they were acutely aware they were navigating uncharted waters. The clock ticked slowly, each second stretching into a lifetime. Dr. Marcos watched helplessly, praying silently, yearning for a miracle. Finally, after what felt like endless hours of tension, the neurosurgeon announced that most of the operation had been a success. They had managed to remove the majority of the cranial appendage. Relief washed over the room, mixed with a contained euphoria. However, the work was not entirely complete. The scar, a permanent reminder of the battle Daniel had fought since birth, would remain. Once the procedure concluded, the baby was taken to the neonatal intensive care unit. The following hours would be critical. Dr. Marcos stayed vigil beside Daniel's incubator, holding his tiny hand. With each heartbeat of the baby, he felt his own heart synchronize. The first signs of recovery were slow but steady. When Daniel finally opened his eyes, Dr. Marcos felt a wave of relief wash over him, nearly causing him to crumble. Daniel had survived. The scar would forever be there, but now it symbolized strength, resilience, and an unyielding will to live. As time passed, Daniel grew, and with each step and each laugh, he demonstrated to the world that he was not defined by the mark on his body, but by the love of a father who never gave up and the determination of a boy who refused to be constrained by the impossible. The first years of school were a true test for Daniel. He was acutely aware of his differences, and childhood can be a cruel world for those who stray from the norm. Children would stare, whisper, and point, their laughter echoing through the halls. They didn't know what he had endured. They only saw the visible scar on his back, a physical reminder of the extra head that had once been there. Initially, Daniel felt lost. The cruel words, abnormal and monster, pierced his heart like daggers. He would return home with tears in his eyes, trying to mask the pain. Dr. Marcos, always attentive and loving, greeted him with a smile and an embrace. He knew he couldn't shield Daniel from everything, 
but he could give him the tools to stand tall against adversity. Listen, buddy, Dr. Marcos would say, kneeling down to Daniel's level. You are not defined by what others think. You're a warrior. Remember, every scar tells a story, and yours is one of incredible strength. Those words became a balm for Daniel's wounded spirit, inspiring him to embrace his journey with courage. Dr. Marcos tirelessly educated Daniel about his condition, instilling in him a sense of pride. They would often discuss the extraordinary challenges they had overcome together, framing them as opportunities for growth. As the years rolled by, Daniel began to find solace in his unique identity. His classmates, who had once taunted him, began to admire him for his courage and resilience. He was no longer the boy with a strange mark on his back. He was Daniel, the brave, the different, the unstoppable. The bond between Daniel and Dr. Marcos deepened, forging an unbreakable connection. Daniel came to see his father not only as a caregiver, but as a hero. Their evenings were filled with laughter, storytelling, and exploration. Dr. Marcos encouraged Daniel to pursue his passions, regardless of the challenges that lay ahead. As Daniel grew, so did his dreams. He wanted to be a scientist, a dream inspired by his father's relentless pursuit of answers and his commitment to uncovering the mysteries of the world. Together, they spent countless hours in the backyard, conducting experiments, exploring nature, and envisioning a future where Daniel could contribute to society in profound ways. The duo faced new challenges as Daniel entered his teenage years. Puberty brought its own set of insecurities, but Dr. Marcos was always there, guiding him through the turbulence of adolescence. They talked openly about love, friendship, and the fears that often clouded the teenage experience. Yet Daniel's journey wasn't without struggle. People continued to judge him based on appearances, and on more than one occasion, he faced harsh comments and ridicule. Each time, he leaned on his father for support. Dr. Marcos would remind him that there will always be people who don't understand, but what truly matters is how they see themselves and how they choose to respond. One pivotal moment arrived during a school presentation on resilience. Daniel stood before his classmates, heart pounding, vulnerability etched on his face. I want to talk about my life and what it means to be different, he began, looking out at the sea of faces. The room fell silent, and for the first time, he spoke of his journey, the surgeries, the challenges, and the unconditional love he had received from his father. As he spoke, a hush descended over the classroom. The whispers faded, replaced by understanding. Daniel's bravery became a beacon of inspiration for others, and from that day forward, he became a champion for those who felt different, encouraging empathy and acceptance in a world often quick to judge. Years passed and Daniel blossomed into a remarkable young man, intelligent, compassionate, and ready to change the world. He graduated high school with honors, his achievements a testament to his unwavering spirit and his father's unwavering support. On the day of graduation, as Daniel walked across the stage, he caught sight of Dr. Marcos, his heart swelling with pride. The two shared a knowing glance, understanding the unspoken bond that had sustained them through every trial and tribulation. Thank you for believing in me, Daniel whispered as he hugged his father tightly after the ceremony. Always, my boy, always, Dr. Marcos replied, his voice thick with emotion. Remember, it's not about the number of heads we have, it's about the strength of our hearts. As they stepped into the future together, they carried with them a legacy of love, a powerful reminder that true strength lies not in physical appearance, but in the unwavering bond between a father and his son.